Oh, hello, chat. I hope everything is working. This is my first host uh, hosting time in a, in a podcast. Welcome to the season two of the Echo Chamber podcast, guys, powered by Elgato Wave. Uh, today's topic is going to be the uh, MDI that is coming up very, very soon. In fact, it, it basically started, right, with the access being uh, given to you guys. Could you already practice anything? Can you do any keys? Yeah, we can do everything. Like the TR is fully open now. Oh shit! Okay, okay. So basically, we're 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 holding you hostage right now. You would like to just go practice and go crazy, right? <laughs> what what is your practice schedule like? Um, um we can go first. Yeah, yeah I mean, we have uh, one guy from the United States, so we have to play during the night, kind of like very late. So it's a bit different. But, but how many hours per day or like oh, uh, do you do not practice every day or how is as it? As maximum as possible, like 12 hours maybe, <laughs> minimum. <laughs> okay. How do you, Jinji? Uh, we are usually like uh, starting at 12 to 1 and then we uh, end up till around uh, midnight. That's usually when we end um in terms of game gameplay and then of course we got scheduled uh, breaks in between a lunch break and a dinner break or we call it a sandwich break rather because we are starting around lunchtime uh and then we maybe talk a little bit like after and uh many times we are also like spending time analyzing some of our practice and things like that outside of the actual playing hours so we usually have those like 10 to 12 hours of actual gameplay and then some theorizing outside of that uh, as well. So it's pretty intense hours. Oh, okay. You do yeah. like 10 to 12 hours of gameplay and then you also do extra hours talking about uh, theory, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, of course, Jinji uh, and Maystein are from uh, um, Echo and uh, <laughs> Mandatory. But uh, Frago will also be uh, for the first time, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. Is it the first time, Frago? Yeah, first time doing MDI or trying it uh, out. Uh, I guess. What's your team's name? I don't even uh, know. Ma Monkey Business, I guess. Someone came up. <laughs> that kind of like his name, I, I don't know. Just uh, YOLOing it. Okay, so how, mm -hmm. how, how ham are you guys going? Yeah, the plans are a little bit uh, open right now. I think the plan is to not go too hard uh try out uh mdi a little bit you know do some decent times maybe on the keys see how it is you know uh not not as uh hard as this big dog here yeah but i mean you, don't you still have a schedule like four hours per day or is it just full yolo whenever you're around it's kind of full yolo i'm, I'm imagining <laughs> it's gonna be around like four to six hours maybe a day we'll practice a little bit uh, here and there and yeah try okay and is the goal to make it into the season finals or is it just get, getting into the cups? Is there like a set goal that you guys have? No, no real goals, at least not that I, I know of. It's like we haven't, we still need to have a little bit of a discussion about it. Uh, but for now, the goal is just to kind of see it and feel it out and, you know, see how, where it goes. Get the mm. feeling of MDI. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe uh, we could pop the graphic as well that explains the, how the MDI works uh, for the audience so that we have an idea. Um, so yeah, as you see, guys, uh, the we, we start with the time trials, right? And anyone can sign up for this. Like, there's no limit, guys, right? All right yeah, yeah, I think can sign up. Yeah, you can, you can sign up. As soon as you have five people, go for it if you want to sign up. And uh, the top 16 teams from uh, these time trials they will go to uh, the cup stages and they will be split into two teams, uh, group A and group B. And you can also win up to, well, not up to, there's a prize pool of 30K. I'm not sure how it's distributed. Uh, I'm guessing the first team gets uh, the, you know, the, a big chunk. Is it always uh, is it always half in prize pools? I don't even know. Is the first um, team getting half? It, it used to be, but now the winning team is taking a, a less percentage of the total prize pool. Okay. Um, of the winnings, I guess they had to do that since we won too many in a row. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> wow, shots already fired. And um, from these team uh, groups, four teams will advance to the global finals. So eight teams total will be in the finals, and they'll be competing up uh, for, for the two hundred k prize pool. And there, the winner team gets how much? Inji, you bet. I bet you know that. Um, I mean, they have uh, for this one, they've reduced it a little bit because 
they added an extra one for season four. Um, so yeah, I don't remember exactly what the total price pool is of this one, but uh, they made this one smaller than the other globals this expansion, but it's an overall more like bigger budget uh, because they added an extra tournament. Uh, so I don't remember exactly what this one is now. I mean, the total have... one is 200k for the finals, but I don't know how much the winning team gets. But I guess you're saying you don't play to get money. You're doing it uh, for the win, for the victory, yeah? Yeah, M MDI and is the competitive uh, part of it that uh, that drives uh, our team mainly. I mean, sure, yeah. there's a couple people. And of course, the money is nice. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it's part of it. Uh, but the, the competition is uh, the main reason why we do it. Mm. Yeah, I understand. Uh, this uh, it, it has to, I think, right? Because the money isn't that insane for the amount of hours you put in. I remember back in the days, you guys, I think it got a bit better, but uh, back in the days, you guys were complaining that there is so much time to practice and uh, oh. that it wasn't really worth it, really. You were just doing EFA. it. EFA was crazy. Okay. Yeah, mm. yeah. It, because it was, it was three to four cups, and then it was accumulated points of all of those three to four cups, and it was... Uh, it was region based so like it was it went from uh, uh, eu cups then it was na plus asia cups and then it rotated like that uh for um like um the beginning seasons uh each region had three cups and then they increased it so it was four cups so you had one week practice one week cup and literally three weeks so it was it was uh six weeks of like mdi grinding and then then you got like the accumulated points, which then made you qualify to the global finals, which you then had like those two weeks of practice time into the weekend of gaming. So mm. you probably committed like around two months to the MDI seasons back then in BFA. And the global finals earnings were nice. But if you took all of the time that you had to do in the cups where the earnings weren't that much, the time that you spent preparing was just too too high, right? Especially mm. if you didn't win. Imagine you commit super hard and then you get a bad placement in the globals. Then the hourly rate is not high, right? That was the main issue. But now it's it's uh, way less. You do a qualifier, uh, one uh, cup, and then it's global. So it's way better now. Mm -hmm. Is that is that was that a factor for you? For example, Frago or Maystein getting into it because Juju was playing it back then as well. He didn't care. I don't know if Maystein was. Where uh, no, I started in Shadowland like uh, the first season, really. Uh, back then I tried to, but it was really hard to find people to commit to that because of what yeah. Kiki said. Like it, it was very bad pay, Jagra, if you don't make make it in the first place. So yeah, very hard to find people. Mm. And you, Frago, do, do, do you like go into this thinking maybe this is something I'll do properly and like seriously the next times around? Or yeah, I think uh, there was a lot of talk around the guild as well. Like guys, just try it out. You know, it's uh, kind of easy nowadays. You know, maybe you qualify. Uh, you know, <laughs> and well, yeah, I guess we'll <laughs> see where it goes. Yeah, I mean, you guys, uh, our, our guild is pretty insane when it comes to you. the M plus as well. Everyone, like, there's so many people playing, I guess, and they're pretty good at it. Um, are you guys going to be streaming your practice? I'm guessing maybe Frag will stream this. Yeah, I, I think our, because we go a bit more casual, I think our plan is to stream everything. Uh, yeah. What about you, Gigi Mason? Um, I mean, streaming the time trials and the practice is like streaming PTR and everything like that. It's, I think, a big part of MDI. I think there's a lot of good teams that can execute a good DPS and uh, effective gameplay. But one of the biggest parts of MDI is figuring out like uh, really, really efficient routes and giving that away is just uh, a massive yeah. disadvantage. Uh, so we, are, we don't stream because of that reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same. We won't stream because it's giving away too much knowledge and MDI, it's a lot about knowledge and every data that you can gather. It's just not worth it if you want to win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what do you? I mean, I, I'm guessing Frago. I mean, <laughs> no VM, but <laughs> you know, what are your odds of winning? Is the question I want to ask. But what mm -hmm. do you think are the odds of winning? I'm guessing Frago has no hopes. It's just uh, trying uh, it out. If, if, if I try a little bit, uh, you know, maybe I could do it. But uh, maybe I'll give these guys a chance once more before I go hardcore <laughs> in this. One. 
All right, so this last one, do you think uh, Gingy may see, you know, what, what, are you, what would you, like, realistic, you literally, your percent chance of winning, like with RNG included and uh, with everything, because it is a bit crazy. I, I looked at it, Echo has been winning, like, every single one. It's a bit insane. Uh, there has to be, at some point, like, some bad luck, right? I, it, I don't know what's going on there, but uh, last time Ministry was close. You guys were in the finals. What do you think uh, your, are your odds? Let's start with uh, Misty. Yeah, it's getting closer and closer. We feel like um, I think this season we have a good shot at winning. Like we actually feel like it. Give us a percent. Well, I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, it's 50-50. You win or you lose. So. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> okay. And uh, Dingy, what do you think? Um, well, I was going to say the same. I don't want to jinx anything, right? Uh, <laughs> so, like, 50-50 is, is a good one. Like, you, we either win or we don't win. Of course, we are always confident going into it, right? We should be. I think uh, for any winning team, you need to believe that you're a winning team. Um, you need to believe in your own ability. Uh, but uh, MDI, a lot of things can happen. Uh, for example, I think Mandatory was also one of the favorites in the previous Great Push. Uh, but one blunder and... Uh, like you can go out right like from a s silly mistake or something like that um uh, so it, it can happen um so you just need to play consistent and do practice as much as you can and then uh, just pray that you don't fuck something stupid up right um uh, so yeah yeah i think uh like you uh, talk about routing being very important for uh, mdi i think especially the last one i feel like other teams have caught up a little bit maybe on the routing uh, department i feel like that's where you guys like shined beforehand that you had like these six strats and routes uh, and that's how echo like won every M M mdi but uh, i feel like lately maybe especially mandatory has like caught up a bit and maybe they have uh, better better routes in some uh, dungeons right yeah i think it's unrealistic for us to expect to have the best routes in every dungeon um, but uh, i would like to say that over the course of the weekend of globals if we see that another team have certain strategies or a certain route that uh, we feel like uh, is better or they're doing the cooldown timings in a, in a in a way that we feel like is more efficient then we're really quick to adapt to those changes and you might see like a different uh route uh towards the third day of the cup than what you saw in the first day uh, and i think uh, the having the ability or having a uh, majority of your maps being one of the best leaves you room to uh, adjust and improve some of the ones that you might feel like you're a little bit behind on but because you have done a really good job on the other ones you have the time to do that mm -hmm. um so i think that makes a big difference yeah of course if you're if you're all played on every front it's hard to adjust to everything but if it's yeah. just one or two adjustments you need to do of course it's easier do you hold any strats like you have some big thing and you're like let's just not do it and risk potentially losing a game uh yeah many times uh we did that in the grand finals last uh mdi season as well in halls of valor uh we were saving a snap check um when it when it mattered and uh we won that series as well because of it i think um and uh it was also important for us to make the other team feel like they had the better dungeon uh, and I think they went in, in with the like in that game thinking that they had that and that's always a nice feeling when you know you have something that they, they don't expect coming and uh, that's what we of course try to do sometimes but uh, you don't want to lose a series because you're holding on to something so we're usually saving it for like the really good teams right and we try to mm. pick up on some information like okay so we've seen them do this series already so we kind of know what they have and then we can choose whether or not we want to hold it or send it. Sometimes we need to send it, of course. Do you, do you ever decide that mid-game? Like somebody looks at it, oh, we're there actually ahead. You know, if it's a later thing, just, okay, we're going to, you know, start uh, go project A. We're going to Albatross, uh, you know. <laughs> Are you, do you ever do that? Yeah. Um, Savo was our sixth man and he uh, oh. said hold it in one series. Oh, oh okay. What about you, Macy? Did, did you guys ever hold stuff as well? We had the same uh, snap uh, strat in holes, but sadly we didn't do it. 
uh, because it was bolstering, uh, if I remember correctly. We sometimes lost the, the B here, and we couldn't activate the, the RP of the minibuses, so we, we said, nah, it's too risky. But we definitely have some strats um, mm. that we keep until it's needed to, to win the map, the series. Yeah, I, I think having that six man saying, hold it, is actually very good, yeah. yeah. I didn't know you, you had it. Do you guys have a six man at all? Nope. Okay. No, sir. Well, I think I think it would be. I mean, I don't think you have to be a genius to figure out if you're ahead or behind, right? So I think it might be a, a good investment to have someone. Or, or do you actually, without a six man, look at the stream while Usually playing? Usually, you have some downtime in some dungeon where we can just look at what the oh, other okay. team is doing um, mm -hmm. and then adjust if they do. Mm. Maybe play safer or maybe go big. <laughs> What is the even like the stream delay and stuff? Uh, and what's the like? I guess there's no, like I don't know, bad manners police or anything. I'm looking at other teams on the streams, it's like the standard thing that you do or what? Yeah, I think it's like two minutes something. Two minute uh, delay. Yeah, I don't remember exactly how much, but you uh, always look you... kind of a bit. <laughs> you just quickly look. <laughs> Are you guys going to actually stream uh, the competition this time? I know in TGP you can, but in MDI, I believe it wasn't possible in the past. Uh, you can do uh, like watch parties. That's what you were asking. I mean, that is also a question. Yeah, I, I was actually wondering that maybe we do want as Echo, but uh, as a player, do you stream your own POV at all? No, right? I actually don't know if you can, uh, but even <laughs> if you could, I don't think you will because you will give too much information uh, unless it's like the last day of Global's finals, then maybe you yeah. you can. I see. Okay, yeah, it would be interesting for sure if you could. I know you do in TGP though, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um. Okay, let's... Um. I, I, I guess, um, you know, maybe... We talked a lot about this current MDI, but what about, um, in general, the format? What do you think uh, between the MDI and the TGP or potentially a different version of this? Do you think these, you know, the way it is done right now is the best way? Do you have an idea where how it could be better or is there something that you don't like about it at all? Maybe also, also as a viewer, Frago, you have been mm. perhaps watching them as well. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I, I can't say I've been like a really hardcore watcher or like, a, <laughs> I guess. But uh, from what I've seen, I, I think the last time they changed the MDI format quite a bit and it was better than before, I think. Uh, but I guess traditionally I like the, G, the TGGB, uh, the Great Push format more. Um, it was just like more interesting to me. E even like not having played high keys myself, which I now have, I like the great push format more it was like just more interesting like a weekend of people just pushing a little time limit there uh, but yeah i actually can't even remember how the mda was last time but it felt better than before uh, i think oh, it was yeah. pretty much the same format um Pardon? yeah uh really i like mdi format more like doing some best of threes i feel like it's mm. better like great push maybe too much uh and uh i don't like the fact that you know, you get knocked out if you lose the first day and then you can't make it to the day two and three, even though it's not the highest key yet. So it's a bit weird for me. Um, mm. So I like the right. AI format more, I think. Yeah, I think uh, it's... Uh, a sorry, I'll go first, Mike. I think it's a bit interesting uh, in all esports and uh, stuff, uh, like the what, what a viewer might find interesting and what, what player might find enjoyable can be two different things totally, right? Sure. Yeah, I am. Um, I just want to say, like, I think uh, the um, elimination part of the GDP, I think, uh, should probably be a little bit avoided because there's a lot of focus on how you play in um, day one and not so much about the accumulated performance over the course of the weekend, right? Uh, so I, I don't, I think eliminating someone in the globals day one because they had a bad day one. I think uh, maybe a little bit extreme. Uh, I would say that uh, even though it's extreme hours that you're playing like uh, intensively for uh, like five hours um, over three days, 
it feels more calm to play the TGP, whereas uh, MDI series kind of gets your heart going, like you know the 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 heart starts beating faster. That that's that's the kind of like vibes you get in MDI because you know yeah. that it now it's on, now is when it matters. Uh, whereas in the great push, there is less pressure on you because if you make a mistake, you can just uh, deplete the key. Well, not deplete. You just reset the key and you go again, right? Um, it's like uh, it's the accumulated performance over the course of the full weekend, and not specifically your performance in like one series. And I feel like the best teams will have a higher chance at winning a great push. Whereas in the MDI, a worse team can win uh, mm-hmm. statistically, right? Because have like a surprise victory. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You yeah, can get a surprise time. victory more likely, but that usually doesn't happen. In great push. Yeah, that's why I also asked the percentages before. Exactly. Like I was a bit surprised seeing. Yeah. Like it. it I mean, I, I knew about all, all all the time you guys are winning, obviously, but when I saw it, I was like, damn! Why did they never have? I mean, this can really quickly go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so I was a bit surprised. Um, I I do want to perhaps get back to the topic, but you said about the heart beating thing, and I'm very curious about one thing. Um, what do you think, uh, especially Mike, who has, uh, and also uh, Mastin, who has been in the finals as well? Um, what do you think is uh, more exciting? It, maybe maybe it's also because it's similar to the TGP format. I'm gonna compare it to rating as a spoiler. Uh, what do you think is more exciting, getting that war first or getting that uh, victory in MDI or TGP? I mean, I, I, I have big nerd screams on both, um, but I think uh, I would love to get a LAN tournament again in MDI, right? Because I gotta say, like, the peak win was on the BlizzCon stage. That's like when you really, really felt the vibes. That had, like, similar um, hype to, like, a world's first you're surrounded by your teammates you have a lot of people sitting there cheering on you celebrating with you and that makes the win feel like that much better uh whereas like when i win an mdi of course i'm like super happy in the moment um but uh that winning feeling dissipates faster uh than it does during the race that was first uh, i would say um so if it was a land tournament on a big stage, I'd say it compares. Like I think uh, it feels just as good as like a mm-hmm. race towards first win. Uh, but uh, I'd say that when we are playing online at home, it feels good, but it doesn't compare to like uh, being around the uh, people and your teammates. I think. So. Yeah, for but, sure. Yeah. What do you? What, what do you uh, I guess a little bit also altered your question. You can answer the previous one as well, Macy. But. Um, which one uh, would you rather win? Let's say like that. <clears throat> um, well, I didn't have a chance to win MDI yet, so <laughs> I know I want to win MDI so bad <laughs> and uh, have that feeling um, because it's during globals finals, like <clears throat> the, the very like the finals. Um, it's been so intense that I don't know. I you want to win so badly and. I wanted that, that feeling one time. <laughs> yeah, I, I can only imagine. I never tried uh, any tournament stuff. The guys asked me if you want to play two games to get a banner. Apparently, you get a banner if you play on the tournament realm, if you do two keys or something. But uh, that, that's as close as I got. I got asked to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't really imagine it that good. But uh, yeah, it, it does make sense that uh, because you haven't done it yet, it feels like you really want to. Um, uh, since so we're already... every time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, since uh, we are uh, already talking about you know rating and uh, M plus comparisons, um, maybe Frago is a good person to ask, who's now also starting to you know blast keys uh, regularly. Mm-hmm. Do you think Frago that uh, doing regular keys? you know, improved your gameplay with the raid at all? Uh, and also, do you think, and maybe, you know, you don't really know the difference because you haven't never raided and done keys, but do you think your raiding knowledge, you know, how much translation is going back and forth there of skill? Yeah, of course, the basic 
gameplay loop is the same. You know, you're, you're playing WoW, you know, you're playing Dungeon, you're playing Raid. You do mechanics, of course, uh, a bit simpler usually in M+. I think there's a, a bit different, uh, I guess, things that you need to focus on in M+. It's a lot of stops uh, and interrupts are things that go wrong. And like in raiding, where it's usually just people failing mechanics. Um, I think a lot of the outside of gameplay uh, attributes are very good in M+, as well. Like if you're in a high, uh, high key pushing team or MDI team, I imagine... Uh, like have, being a good communicator, uh, bringing good vibes, having good personality, whatever, uh, it's as important as I think as in rating. But uh, gameplay-wise, yeah, there's a little bit of carryover, but uh, it's it's quite different, I would say, as well. I mean, yeah, yeah I, I would say, like, the, the fact that you're spending so much time, like, analyzing your own gameplay, looking for improvements, I think it applies to your own self-improvement in the raid as well. Because you start like imp uh, implementing all of these things, doing progress, um, also playing closely with uh, a team, um, the communication becomes better, and also, uh, and by that I mean um, you figure out how to communicate properly when you you know what is the right thing to say at the right time, uh, when are you saying too much, uh, like when do you need to escalate things, for example, or uh acknowledging your own mistakes and things like that you know just gen like Brago said uh, just being a good teammate and the good vibes i think it's important if you want to play with a team for a long time because there's going to be friction and everyone kind of just wants the same thing and sometimes you clash when it comes to ideas and whatnot and i think uh all of those aspects are like really really crucial and i think they help uh in every part of the game mm. And uh, Mason, you were mostly an M plus player, right? Before you joined Echo, I, I remember that you were the Feral Pumper. That's uh, how we recruited you. <laughs> I don't even know what guild you played in, honestly. Before, uh, did did you play? Uh, uh, I wasn't playing Frontier yeah. too much in M plus. Uh, I was usually playing, uh, I think, Unkin most of the time. Um, but uh so you want to know what what which, which guild i play with, with before? Uh, yeah uh, which guild did you play in and also do you um, think your rating skills and the plus skills translates but you, you don't really if, if you agree with everything you suggest you can just say yeah whatever yeah. i don't have anything to add i mean i agree that the communication is important and you kind of learn better in a plus because there are only five people and sometimes it's easier to, to speak um but yeah the gameplay is kind of different because you need to focus more on stops and actually surviving one shot most of the time uh, mainly on buses i guess it helps during raid uh, especially for the race world first where you can actually get one shot uh, you need to manage defensives pretty good uh, and so guild uh, i was playing in a friendly guild but still try harding like um i think we did top 200 that was not do great but still trying to um clear every time and then i joined the best french guild so impact mm -hmm. we did like uh, top 10 top 15 and um i learned a lot there for sure mm -hmm. okay so we didn't just run I like like you. every day yeah. mm -hmm. okay um yeah that makes sense um comparing again rating to M plus the, the the practice that goes into it i know a lot of the audience does not necessarily know uh, how much i mean I, I feel like M plus practice everyone kind of understands what you're doing race of first practice is a bit more messy and uh it's a lot of meetings a lot of uh communication that needs to happen a lot less gameplay because it's just an hour of a boss that we get uh okay there's also the normal weekends i guess but Again, in those weekends, we're just mostly talking. We're not really playing that much. Um, what do you enjoy in terms of um, the preparation? Which which scene do you enjoy more? I would guess it's the M plus mm -hmm. scene, uh, but I don't know. What do you think? I think M plus because you can, you get to play more. Uh, you still think a lot about stuff and but review a lot. Sometimes you just for the full day you just look at stuff and you analyze every, every pool. Um, but yeah, just M plus, I think, because you get to play more. Uh, Race to World First, you can't play every every time the boss, like you have limited time, so. Mm -hmm. 
I would go with everyone agrees. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd say the same. It, it is, uh, of course, there's a lot of theory, but it's like uh, you weave in more gameplay as you're talking, uh, and it's it's less uh, long hours of talks uh, for uh, potential strategies or the way that this boss potentially works like, or uh, things that we need to test. Uh, does can you immune this? Can you do that? Like, can you bait this? Can you do you know all of these like things that you need to do to figure out like a raid boss uh, which are necessary but uh, less enjoyable to do uh, they're kind of like uh, removed in the MDI mm -hmm. and uh, Frago what do you think yeah I mean we haven't really I guess I did the high key pushing and we I guess kind of practice it's kind of like an ongoing thing of practicing and just trying to push the keys actually uh, I think ra raiding still in general I just enjoy more uh, just as a gameplay format i suppose um i don't know how the practice would differ though also <laughs> farm rating or just are you compared progress rating co compared to M plus or also farm rates do you enjoy farm rates more than pushing high keys for example mm, yeah it, it's close it's close i just like enjoy rating so much uh yeah for high keys it's it's more like a free flow and it's like ongoing process I think and maybe a bit less pressure for me, of course, right now than like uh, practicing for pro progress because it's you know, high stakes. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, super different for me. We were talking about the, the prep, right? Like, because uh, of mm. course, I I mean, the progress itself is also like uh, that's that's topping uh, my enjoyment and wow for sure. Yeah. Uh, like actually playing progression, but it was more the the preparation yeah, the prep process. Yeah. yeah, the prep before raid. Yeah versus the prep for an MDI. It's just uh, that's where I think I enjoy the prep more in MDI, but the actual play gameplay, more. yeah, the actual gameplay progress takes uh, number one for me as well. Like uh, Frago said, rating for yeah. sure. Uh, yeah. That is... I was wondering about that. Like, uh, I think with the rating and uh, the well first race, a lot of the enjoyment at the winning moment comes from also like relief, right? You put so many hours into this and so much preparation. And it's kind of a mix of relief and just like pride of you know be, doing something impressive. Uh, mm. Is it any different in MDI? Is it like just you're like oh, all the preparation paid off, or is it just like we I don't know? Is, is it any different uh, feeling? I guess because like rating is more like a marathon, right? It's like a, it's just like a mix of everything. Mm. I don't know. It, it it depends a little bit. I think um, when it's a really close win. There is a sigh of relief at the end uh, involved with the the nerd screams as well. Mm -hmm. I felt that especially if the last race was first, um, but then there is like race was first that still feels good, right? Especially because the as of the of the length, like the poker where we already knew before the boss was killed that we had won. It was mm -hmm. kind of the same thing with the previous great push that we were two points ahead and we knew like hours beforehand that we had already won. So you had like a good feeling inside of your body for a long time, but you didn't have this explosive nerd scream of relief. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that, that depends, depends on the competition, though, right? Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. If the competition is good, I'm guessing you have that uh, in both things. And last time the competition in Race of Force was good, I think it's hard to top that one. Yeah. So, yeah. For sure. Um, okay, if I will make you make a really rough decision. This is the last question about rating versus. Uh, uh, plus, if you and, and this is this can't be used against you in the officer court, um, <laughs> especially I think because we had a talk with Macy about this not uh, like a bit recently. If you had to quit one, would you you would you pick M plus to quit or the race war first, including everything, right? Farm prep, the whole the whole thing. That's a rough one to choose. <laughs> I mean, if I had to consider everything and the situation that I'm in right now, uh, I could do the raid progress and I could like be a streamer, I could stream high keys and things like that. Then I would have to pick that and then not compete in MDI. Uh, but of course, it's like saying, uh, what is your favorite kit? You have to kick one off the fucking balcony. <laughs> like, you know, like it, it's it's a really hard uh, question. Like you don't want to give anything of them up. Uh, so I yeah, if I had to choose. I gave an answer to this. He likes rating more guys. What about you, Mason? I feel like both goes so well together that 
it's so hard to choose one. Uh, I mean, let's assume the M plus over like the next one, the I overlap with the racer wall first. You know it ahead of time, and oh. uh, like hmm. your team wants you really to play on both ends. <clears throat> <laughs> I, I need a lot of time to think about that. For yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> Answer carefully. Yeah. Here could be a team not competing if his team coming in snagging the win. <laughs> That's not a good argument, actually. <laughs> True. Yeah, okay. I mean, and so if it's a, if it's a rough call, that's that's an answer, you know. Mm. Uh, it's tough to make the that make that call. Um all right, jumping a bit topics then, uh, what do you guys think about the current meta in uh, in the M plus? Uh, and the, the most, uh, you know, asked question that I had and, you know, had to contemplate a lot myself as well, is augmentation a requirement or is it an option? Uh, it's not a requirement, but it definitely makes the key easier if you don't dip it because of DPS. Uh, like if you have time to complete the key and all, all you need to do is survive, then I think augmentation is a must have. Um, and right now, every key feels like that, at least, uh, for our team. Every time we deplete, it's because <clears> a big mistake, uh, or just full wipe, or it's never because of DPS, so... I would say augmentation is probably the best right now, yeah. What about the um, yeah. yeah, I mean... Actually, it, actually it, let, let Frago answer, because he is an augmentation main, okay? You know uh -huh. your place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I think it's felt kind of the same way for our team so far. I mean, we haven't really explored other uh, options too much, uh, but augmentation definitely, as Mason said, it usually feels like as long as you can survive, you can climb the key. I think at the cutting edge of like pushing keys to the very limit at the end of the season, like let's say like plus one or two key levels higher than some of the best times right now, I feel like you might need to go for another comp. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be a big puzzle, of course, how you survive these one-shots uh, without augmentation or something. It's just a quick thing, is that also for fortified or just tyrannical you're thinking of? I mean, if you push fortified high enough, it's going to be the same as ty tyrannical, of course, right? Uh, sure. It's going to become a problem in the end. Mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, yeah, I guess go, go on, Jinji. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, no. Um, I mean, the, the question is for high keys, right? uh in, in this case because i think augmentation brings a lot it has crazy good utility uh there's no doubt about that uh, if uh, augmentation is like competitive as another dps um that you would bring in instead it always has a place the thing is that they've nerfed it so much now that you are sacrificing output to gain more survivability but the current situation high keys now is that people haven't reached like cap whether losing a key or not timing it because of output so augmentation just brings too much good stuff right um but the, in, in in the mdi it's a different case the key levels are not mm -hmm. high enough so you don't need the augmentation so you can definitely play something else the meta is not set in stone now by the way there's a lot of that's a good thing there's way more class representation nowadays uh, so you're probably going to be seeing people play different comps, figuring out what they feel like is going to be the best classes. It might be different classes for different dungeons as well. And I think you'll see a lot of teams now, especially with time with tournament coming up, that they will be experimenting a lot of different classes and comps to try and figure out what is actually going to be uh, the meta this time, because it's not really something people know yet. Do, Especially do the with the buffs coming today. New buffs uh, came today on a lot of specs too. Oh yeah, true. Those are applied to the tournament realm as well, right? That's a bit crazy. Yeah. I think, uh, for example, Riot does it. Uh, and the only other game that I somewhat played or looked at competitively was League of Legends. And uh, there, uh, I think you're playing on like an older patch. You don't play on the live patch. So you guys have to adjust quite quickly, I guess. Um, is, well, kind of also hand in hand with that, is... Uh, Augmentation still bugged on logs? Do we still not know what, how much DPS they're doing? I don't think anyone knows exactly what's up. Well, I, I, like, uh, assumption, is, <laughs> assumption is they are <laughs> they are so, somewhat correct, but I think I'm uh, feeling there's some stuff that is wrong still. Uh, it's I feel, yeah quite minor, I think. I think there's like some very big AOE pools. You get some weird uh, stuff happening <clears throat> more so, 
but otherwise it's I think mostly correct, but there's some some stuff wrong. I think that's kind of my wipe. Yeah, um, I think that they're getting undervalued unlocks. Like some classes yeah, are stealing yeah. stealing uh, their damage, uh, and they look lower unlocks than they actually are. And uh, some classes that are getting hot buffed in a raid fight, they might actually mm -hmm. look better than they actually are. Um, I mean, it, some of it, I mean they've been working on it a lot, from my understanding, and they've been improving on it. But I doubt that it's hundred percent accurate because uh, I've seen some sketchy stuff that doesn't reflect on like when you look at the data unlocks and then you have a completely different feeling from the actual performance that's what I feel like a lot of times when I'm mm. playing with augmentation evokers mm. yeah you check the Ebon met up time what did this guy do what did he do <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean when I played without augmentation it felt like it was better it was faster um, mm. but In no idea I mean I'm just okay. parking around keys right yeah, yeah, you know, plus in, you in high do lower damage. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I think that's oh, yeah, how yeah. it seems. It's slightly lower damage. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think Lux uh, also had tested that. Yeah. Um and uh, how, what did I actually want to ask for? I don't even know. Oh yeah, does everybody agree that in the MDI augmentation is probably not going to be used because it's lower keys? Because uh, you guys, we just talked uh, about high keys now. Well, we don't know the kill of all yet, but I would assume so, yeah. No og, Unless you can do something crazy uh, with the uh -huh. utility. So special paradox, I would say, or waystone. Uh, that's mm -hmm. pretty much it. Yeah, those are like the only things that came to my mind. Why would yeah. you play augmentation? Uh... So what are you going to play if the key is not... Uh, uh, I haven't really decided. I guess uh, because we are a bit more casual. Might just play Augmentation, might play Devastation, might pick up a new class, who knows, uh, you know, play a Boomkin or something. Uh, okay. Know, good. Maybe, Maybe not uh, Boomkin that good in lower, lower key level. I don't know. Maybe bring back the DK. I don't know. How... how uh... Maybe, yeah, I know this. Uh, there's some legendary buff for DK as well, and they were already, like, pretty decent, right? Uh, I think. I heard I mean, the legendary. I mean, I, I, it felt like it's pretty good. Uh, I haven't actually looked at the latest patch notes. Uh, sorry, I'm a bit un uninformed as a host. I'm ashamed. But uh, people were already quite wondering uh, how good the legendary weapon is, and it felt pretty good. Also, especially because of the eye level. Uh, I would say that's a feeling I had. No idea. I didn't do any sims or anything. What do you guys th think about the legendary uh, in general? Anyone can answer. Uh, it's a nice damage boost. I mean, even if you don't uh, use the unuse effect, it's still a lot of damage gained from eye level and from the dot. Mm -hmm. and, and I think now that you can proc the dot on every target more easily, uh, because it's an holy decay, I think the damage is quite good. And uh, we can probably see that being used in MDI. Um, probably. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't say OP, but just good, yeah? Just good, yeah. Okay. Um, we talked about the role of augmentation. We didn't really... I mean, none of us here is playing healer or tank. Uh, don't have that much representation for them. But uh, they're not that many anyways. No one cares too much about them. But I do want to ask, uh, <laughs> which one... Because I feel like, for example, during raiding, um, up to a certain skill cap, Tanking is the role that you have to have, like, you have to have some sort of skill. If you're below that, it's just going to go in shambles. And after mm -hmm. that, healer is ramping up like crazy, right? So, I mean, same with DPS, I guess you have to meet basic DPS checks. But once you have those two, they are kind of capped and eventually it doesn't matter how good you are that much. But healing mm -hmm. skill cap just is endless, kind of. Is that similar in M+, plus or, you know... Is, is it, uh, what, what do you guys think? From my, I guess I can start as like the noob point of view for M+. Plus. It feels like uh, healer, I feel like tank is, I feel like more impactful in M+. Plus. Like you can, mm. like, I feel like in raiding, you reach the required uh, level quite fast. Uh, as long as you're consistent, uh, you can do it quite easily in raids, I would say in most fights. In M+, Plus, I think tanking is a bit more difficult and it's more high impact, I would say, on how, uh, your, like how your gameplay affects the uh, group. Uh, healer in both cases, I think, is probably the highest impact role, I would say. You can make the biggest difference. That's just my experience. And then DPS, you're going to passenger. Just vape behind. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean for, as a pugger, I definitely agree, because you also often go with the route that the tank says you go with. And if they pull correctly, it feels super smooth. 
but yeah, I mean, obviously other people can mess things up, but uh, I would also say as a pugger, tanking definitely feels like the highest skill check, and, uh, but no idea about the MDI level of this, obviously, or TGP level. What do you guys think, GG Macy, your experience? Um, uh, I think the tank is like 90% of the group. Uh, okay. like if the tank is bad, you will really feel, uh, feel it. And if it's good and you can carry everything, it's so nice. It's like everything so so smooth. Um, I think tank is the most important by far. Did you agree or do you think mage is the most important? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I, I do think that the tank has the most impact. Uh, you will definitely notice a big difference between a good and, and a bad tank um, from like very like minor things as well. Uh, the way you stack up a certain pool and you know, like there's a lot of things, but of course the team comes with the improvements uh, as well and feedback uh, on those things, right? Like when a DPS uh -huh. is uh, getting annoyed because of a certain way or a certain thing or the way a certain pull is being tanked or stacked up, whatever, then it's good to speak up quickly and adjust those things, make those micro uh, things. Uh, so just like those do add up over the course of the whole dungeon, right? But of course, uh, tank survivability and whatnot uh, is helped a lot by a good healer and making sure that your DPSs are doing good control on a pull, uh, making sure that you uh, avoid as much damage as, as you can by doing good AOE stops and whatnot. So it's kind of like a team effort, right? A good mm. team makes it easier for the tank. But if the tank is shit, the whole team crumbles. So it does have uh, the most impact for sure. Mm. Um, who, who is, by the way, uh, tanking for you guys, Misty and Trago? Uh, for us, it's Skylark. It was, mm -hmm. uh, I think, since Shadowland, like, did Shadowland, so. And, and, and do you have any new members in mandatory for this? I mean, I I, I know uh, certain things, but yeah. I don't know if that's very public. <laughs> <laughs> They're it's, not it's, public. It's public, it's it's public. <laughs> so we got the stove uh, as our placement for Rx. Mm -hmm. So stove who is uh, also from Echo. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice uh, ad addition to the team. It's a, it's a traitor <laughs> 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 joining the enemy forces. And uh, Frago, I guess it's Andy, right? Yeah, we have Andy tanking. It's been oh, a good yeah. job doing doing a good job so far. Uh, hope it continues. Yeah. Uh, Andy has uh, ex like he has experience in the. Yeah, I think he has done MDI as well before and a lot of high yeah. and stuff. He's quite an experienced M plus player, I think. And who who's in the full setup? Because you guys are a fully fresh team. Yeah, I mean it's just our high, high key team. Uh, we're playing with uh, Tanner, Speed, and uh, Wildy, and me of course. Oh uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So some yeah, metal players and uh, a couple players mixed kind of. Yeah, sounds good. Well, yeah, best of luck. Um, continuing on the current meta, I don't know if, as a player, when I play it, like, I really rarely care about these things. When it comes to raiding as well, um, like, I enjoy, for example, most bosses. I just enjoy them. I don't know. Uh, people ask me, what's your favorite boss? Pretty much all, like, usually, yeah. Uh, yeah. When, when I play dungeons, it's quite similar. Um, but it's also, I guess, when I'm doing dungeons, I'm barely keeping up with uh, what's going on. I don't have the time to think which dungeon is necessarily better designed. Uh, how is it for you guys? Do you have, like, a dungeon where you're like, oh, man, this is such a tilt to practice. No one likes this thing. I wish it was gone. Mm. I guess I can start. I mean, just from high keys and stuff, uh, uh, I, I feel like probably every player is going to have favorites. And just objectively, I think some dungeons play better than others um for some reason i don't know our team does good in uh, like both of the dawn of the infinite dungeons so i like initially actually like when they came out and stuff i never really played the mega dungeons and i didn't really like the dungeons but nowadays i feel like those are quite nice um it, like it, maybe everbloom wakefest don't feel as nice for some reason for me uh, I think for MDI it's probably going to be different as well, eh? because there's going to be like in some dungeons you can do a lot of different stuff with routes, and some dungeons are more scripted, but you can't really do some cool things. Uh, so it's, I imagine it's going to be different, right? What about you, Jinji? You may see in any dungeon, like maybe also the uh, the fact that you can choose, for example, Atal Dazar, you know, which boss you do first and stuff. Do you care about this stuff, or is it just whatever for you? Just give me the dungeon, and I'll just figure it out. Um, I think it's nice to have the possibility to go any 
where you want in a dungeon, like very open. Uh, if you compare like Throne of the Tide and Wakecrest, for example, like Throne is you don't really have to choose, you can't really choose much, you just go forward and press W. Um, so I like more like dungeon like Atal and Wakecrest. Um, and also when you don't have to kick a lot of mobs, uh, I think this is very annoying. Uh, nobody likes that, I think. You, really, you just want to blast and not think too much about interrupt. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, we also see that we're going to go away from like a lot of these uh, affixes in the next uh, expansion, which is really good. I think uh, people are getting kind of like tired of the inconsistencies. Like you have good weeks and then you have bad weeks. And uh, are we getting just, away from that? Uh, yeah, they're they're doing like one affix only. Um, cool. Like I I'm still voting for seasonal affixes uh, with uh, positive effects and not as punishing as like thundering if you mess it up. I think getting rewarded for doing like an affix good and getting rewarded with like damage buffs. I think uh, encrypted was like the best one where you could choose between haste, cooldown reduction or like uh, invis plus speed. Um, but uh, in terms of the dungeons that I dislike, I do think at least in the MDI, if it's a dungeon where there is a forced count in order to progress the dungeon uh, and like then there's RP behind it, it leaves you with very little room to like innovate and do different count than other people. Uh, so I'm in the same boat as like Mace Dean. I think uh, open spaces where you have options, I think is uh, generally more enjoyable uh, than let's say a King's Rest or like a Thorn uh, where you are locked behind killing certain mini bosses and trash around the bosses to trigger them and things like that. It just, you're going to see people run the same strategies and it's going to be about execution yeah. rather than strat. And it just limits you a little bit in terms of what you can come up with. But uh, you do have the, so like how it works in MDI is that you have five maps and then each team, they pick, uh, they blind pick one map that they don't want. So if you feel like you're weak in a certain dungeons or if you just simply dislike that dungeon or maybe you look at your bracket and you only get that dungeon potentially once if you go into third series uh, against that specific team you can remove that one to remove practice time from that specific dungeon which gives you more time to practice other keys so that's also something you can do yeah usually yeah. you can remove one dungeon every time almost because it feels like that yeah unless you go lower bracket uh, day one which is not good. <laughs> Wait. So if you're if you are in a if you start uh, if you have a better rank, you will like avoid a dungeon completely or what? You understand that right? Sorry. Um, just the way the bracket works, uh, you can avoid at least one dungeon, like practice time completely, mm -hmm. because you won't be able to play it because un un unless okay. you, you lose and you go a different way. Ah, uh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, I yeah, get it. Like now. into the lower bracket, bracket there. Yeah. yeah. I see. I think with uh, the sorry, I think with no, the no. affixes, affixes a uh, little bit interesting. I think uh, uh, what Mike mentioned, like I guess next time they go only with one affix and stuff. Uh, I also agree, by the way, that the seasonal affix with uh, <clears throat> encrypt, uh, encrypted, what's, what it's called. Encrypted. Yeah, that's really cool to at least a viewer to watch. Uh, but definitely for dungeons, uh, I feel like affixes are not the best way to introduce difficulty. And usually it feels quite tedious as well. Uh, personally, I would like enjoy it a mo lot more if they introduce difficulty by making them like boss mechanics more difficult or something like that, right? I don't know if you have any opinions on this. Yeah, I think Afflicted and Incorporeal are both very annoying to play. Like it's not even hard; it's just annoying to play. That's like, more, more things to juggle. Big difficulty. Yeah. yeah. Is there any affix that you think is like? This is really good. This is we should have more of these. Mm. Or maybe <laughs> affixes just shouldn't exist. They should put that, back that's, that's affix. Affix. Yeah. Yeah. The only affixes I, I look back on and like I they gave me like sense of enjoyment. They were all seasonal affixes. I don't mm -hmm. think anyone likes bursting. I mean bursting is like, okay, you had a shadow priest and you played dwarf. Okay, it's the most uh, enjoyable affix because you don't play the affix, right? Like that's <laughs> literally uh, the only reason why people uh, enjoy it, like a bursting volcanic week because it's the least impactful week 
uh, where you don't have to think about anything really, right? Like it, so less affixes is definitely more fun. Um, so and seasonal yeah. affixes can give you instead of a negative affix, it will give you some kind of improvement, right? Like a damage buff or a sprint buff or like uh, even awakened was cool. Okay, you can kill this mob and then you uh, can because you go into a different dimension and then where you kill the mob and portal opens and then you can do certain skips that way like you know it kind of made people innovate um and these kind of affixes i think are really really enjoyable even reaping was fine i mean it was just a lot of mob spawning uh and then you just did more damage right the damage numbers are higher more aoe and people kind of like this thing so yeah i think the only <laughs> issue with this is right um that it's the same thing every week and i'm guessing the idea is that they want it to be feeling different every week slightly different mm. my solution you know from playing very little uh, would be i just don't want to play the really bad affixes if it's a minor thing i don't really care about it that much like even bursting is not that bad uh, but sanguine man especially if you have a pug tank and it's the first day of the week they are not warmed up yet are you sitting there the mobs are just healing i just see the timer going down it just feels so bad <laughs> There's nothing that feels worse with person. You can play around it. You know, I, I don't mind those things, but uh, I, I don't think we're going to get around it. There will be affixes, I think, because Blizzard just wants it to be different. So, yeah, yeah but you said there will be yeah. only one affix next time. They already said it. Yeah, they said that in the okay. list one. Uh, but uh, I mean, I don't think necessarily the affixes are the main problem. It's the fluctuation and difficulty that are the problem. Yeah, like sure. if you are if you can only do a certain key in a certain week, uh, that's when it becomes bad, uh, because like you said, uh, bowstring is one of them in certain dungeons that's just really really annoying to deal with, uh, and you have uh, sanguine as well, which slows you down more than any other affix, even after getting nerfed so many times. Um, Afflicted is just like really annoying having to permit this spell. Uh, Raging is so bad. A lot of yeah. budgets. Yeah, raging. I mean, uh, since you have an an augmentation mm -hmm. evoker, it's uh, a little bit easier to deal with, right? Because of the AOE stuff. But uh, there is just a lot of affixes that are just uh, not fun. Um, and uh, when you go from one week doing a key, no problem, and then the next week you get this affix that just counters you completely, or you have to do a different route than you used to. Now you have to do a bolstering route or like some other bullshit, and it's just. Uh, that's where I think it's it's not enjoyable. How do you guys feel about the, uh, I think like in Vagrest Manor, it's like the only place almost where you have some RNG on like each week, right? Where the witches spawn. I don't know if uh, like the mobs would have been like nice if like weekly, maybe the mobs like you had like different setups with the trash mobs and stuff, maybe some stuff like that they could experiment with. Could be nice. I mean, I wouldn't like it, but I don't know. A lot more learning. It's like always a new learning experience, I guess, each week. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the yeah. RNG is really bad. It also depends which witch we have, like the Rune Weaver or the other one. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, it's RNG. very different. Like, Yeah, so. for sure. I, I I think I agree regarding the affixes, at least, uh, with Jinji. If, if it was equally balanced, it wouldn't be a problem. But the thing is also how do you even equally balance that it will you said you know you'll have augmentation to this spell well, now you have to have an augmentation yeah it's not necessarily a nice thing to be forced to pick i mean you're not forced but certain pulls are going to be really rough with uh, no aoe suit um i, I think uh, and, and also depending on the skill level of the people certain affixes will feel a lot harder as well like a sanguine with a bad tank feels a lot worse than a another affix, you know, at, at a lower skill level versus one with a good tank. So I think it's, it's really rough to do it. Um, but uh, yeah, let, let's let's hope uh, let's hope somebody comes with a great idea for the next expansion, or, or just keep it the same and uh, don't rotate it. I don't mind that personally. Um, you said before, um, you know, strategy versus execution. You want it to be more open because you know strategy comes more into play uh versus just executing it which is more just raw skill uh, i want to you know go in more in depth on that uh, how much do you think you know the experience of 
you know, planning things out and knowing how to, and plus kind of matters versus, you know, raw skill. For example, if an equally skilled, um, let's say, let's assume we all know Frago is a lot better. But let's assume Frago was equal skill to Jinji, and he went into M plus. How long would he, and, and you know, you know, assume the team is the same people, five Jinjis versus five Fragos, whatever, right? How long do you think he would need to catch up to you, who has years of experience in M plus, or how much better would he have to be? Can can he even realistically catch up? Do you think? Um, I think it depends a little, but I think it's easier to. Uh, join a team that has some experience and then adapting uh similar to like what clicks did with us right like he had some experience playing mdis with like dr j and stuff like that and then he came into our team um and then he kind of adapted our principles and our knowledge like really really quickly but starting from scratch uh, not having anyone to feed off and actually having to apply those things and learn them yourself it takes a little bit longer but i think if you're a good player and you go in and you join a good team Let's say if Frago joined like a good team that has him the experience. I think like after like one full season uh, of playing, and then I think he would pick up on uh, like many things, right? And then he would probably have caught up, and he would do really really well in the next one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, yeah I'm really on the... asking for the viewers. Just uh, by the way, you know, they are a lot of them maybe want to start playing uh, competitively, but they don't know if they can even. You know do it uh so from their perspective frago represents that perfectly so yeah there we go go on with your thoughts frago yeah i agree on the like probably not like if, if you come into a team like i came to a hockey, hockey team uh, that I, they already know what's up right well tanner and they like they are calling a lot of stuff and uh, i came into like a set table already with their systems so it was kind of easy to come into it i got the grasp of things quite fast uh, yeah, I, I feel like starting like to get into it. The most difficult thing is to f find a team like for other people who are, uh, you know, similar mindset, uh, good vibes, whatever you mix well with them. Uh, I think that's the most difficult thing because that's like the thing that probably prevented me from entering the M plus previously or earlier. Because I just, well, I didn't, I didn't really look for one, but I, you know, I just didn't have a team to play with. Uh, yeah. mm. And um, aside from. Um... Again, I, I want to you know, shift the topic to how to become a good M plus player, kind of. Mm. What do you do, uh, Frago, especially? Because the other ones, they already have a lot of practice. They might even have forgotten the steps they went through to get to yeah. the position they are at. Uh, what do you do to improve and learn all the tricks and uh, how to play, let's say, at a really high level, aside from just playing the game? Because a lot of the audience, is just they're just playing keys yeah. with uh, no direction. Well, there's some major things for sure from what I st when I started. I had to figure out, like, of course, I had some basic understanding of the dungeons uh, from our, uh, like, uh, race prep, like, doing M+. Like, I know what the bosses kind of do and stuff. But I think uh, l just learning the dungeons really well, like, knowing what all the trash mobs exactly do, you know, do you need to be in melee of this? Like, how are the different different abilities baited and stuff? There's, like, a lot of stuff to learn in every dungeon. So I, get, I imagine it's like every season uh, a new thing for the even more experienced guys. They have to learn a lot. Uh, apart from just learning the dungeons, uh, I guess having a good UI is important, as it is in rating. Uh, uh, well, it depends a bit if you're like calling stops or not, like interrupt stops. Uh, whoever is calling them needs to have a good you know, overview of them. That's important, of course. Um, yeah, dungeon. Learning UI, or I what, guess that's uh, most important thing. How do you, for example, handle kicks and stops? You said somebody mm. calling. Is that a requirement? Can you do a different system? You think that would be better? I'm like I'm not mm, a big bug player. I don't know how. I think there's some auto marking stuff, and uh, people just kind of have their own marks and stop and interrupt. Of course, in like very high, I imagine in MDI and stuff, it has to be very coordinated because the stops are limited and there's some super difficult pulls. I imagine you have to be like very precise with them. Uh, yeah, with 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 the, with the interrupts, it's it's kind of I think it's kind of hard without calling, like uh, having a caller. Uh, for us, it's usually like uh, a little bit different people depending on how busy they are. 
in a certain pool, they might be going to stops and interrupts. What, what about you guys, Junji Macy? How do you guys handle kicks and stops? Uh, it's very different between MDI and high keys uh, because high keys you can get a, you need to like do it on the fly kind of. Uh, you have some script at some point, but MDI everything is scripted and you don't really call kicks um, like we know usually what we kick before the pool and then when everything is stacked together it's we have a vdh doing everything else right um, but in high keys uh, i feel like you have to have someone calling kicks and stops uh, always like on the fly that's how we do it at least I mean, I, I agree. I agree. It's nice to have like a coordinator, um, but it's also nice to have uh, certain things uh, pre-assigned, right? Like uh, otherwise, you need to be shotgun calling. And whenever you run into the situation where you as a shot caller feels like you have to look at too many things, if you have to control uh, individual kicks, you have to control AOE silences. And then while a mob is silenced, there's another mechanic that uh, goes through silence that also needs to be, get disrupted by a stun or a roar or something like that. And now you're looking at like three different things while you still have to play your character and to do good to, uh, and do good damage. Like that's when you start getting overwhelmed, right? So you, there's a balance to it. And sometimes you split the jobs. You have like two shot callers calling two different things or sometimes it's like just pre-assigned. There's also some people that like to use weakars for certain things. Um, <clears throat> But I do agree that in MDI, it's uh, it's less calling, honestly. Uh, whereas in high keys, it's uh, more calling because uh, you go into a pool, you do a big pool, you have a lot of pre-assignments, you have like a, a set of AOE stops that you need to do. And with Vengeance Demon Hunter being so good, they can do majority of it. Um, you don't really have to think too much as a DPS player. And then because it's a low key, you go in, you pop cooldowns, and the pull is over like a lot quicker than in a high key, right? Uh, where in a high key, you actually need to start rotating between stuff uh, because the pull lasts so long. Mm. And uh, what is like the, the let's say you're entering the dungeon first time, first time you're doing this pull. Um, is there like a base version? Like, for example, in a pug, you could do auto marking and then. Um, you you're assigned i'm assigned to star kicks i will always kick star and that's it and if there is maybe a circle then i will do circle and then someone else be, will be doing star and i'm like the second prio on star or something i remember back then when i talked to you guys uh like i think maris was telling me that you have a macro that marks the target i have also seen it on some streams that people use that you pick your target and mark it and then that tells everyone this is mine you know get away from this one pick something else is that the base thing uh do you do you have like a specific macro you know that people should know about in pugging keys um yeah i mean i have a mouse over focus macro that also puts uh, my assigned uh, mark which is uh, blue um mm. but it's not like i'm just taking a random one right like we look at mtt mm. and we distribute who takes what kick and then we also have teams because in some polls there's less casters to deal with, uh, and uh, but it's like maybe a caster that casts frequently, so you need to rotate yeah. kicks. And then you have uh, teammates where you rotate with, with uh, those two people. Um, and uh, so it, it's a little bit pull by pull, but uh, we do have set teams and we do have individual marks for certain pulls where there's uh, more casters that you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. uh, when, I, when I was playing M+, uh, this felt like the main thing that goes wrong usually kicks and stops like whenever you play the key it was usually because of this unless maybe you go really high keys maybe it's something else turns into an issue but um is that do you think that's true that let's say uh for like the 80th percentile like you're good you've now been playing on plus you got the muscle memory for the dungeons is that do you think where people can most improve on or what is it that you know, the, the standard try hard person that might be in the chat looking to improve, what is the thing that they should focus on probably uh, to improve their, uh, you know, level of gameplay? Um, I think if you really want to improve and like go the step further, you need to be act active in the key and do everything that you can to time the key. So going on voice and like try try to shot call things 
or at least try to say, okay, you kick this mob, I kick this this one. I think doing that will make you way better and improve really fast uh, than plus. Yeah, I mean, I agree. If, if you are the person to take initiative yeah. and to be the person that like try and set helps the group, but of course, uh, getting to that point where you can do that, you still have a process of getting to that point where you are a capable shot caller and a capable leader. And that's easier said than done, getting to that point. Like right? It doesn't have to be perfect, but mm. at least some mm. very basic stuff. So like in Devil Bloom, making sure mm. everything stacked together, right? Like how many times they did a key where you have two caster mm. outside casting Blasting Us. It's... Yeah. Yes, I, I, I do think that uh, even in Pucks where you're not uh, having voice comms, right? I think if you start actively focusing on control, focusing on stops, having a proper UI that tracks your teammates' things, you might not be able to have the like a perfect overview in the beginning. Uh, that's why it's probably a good idea to start off playing a class, not necessarily a meta class, but like the class you feel the most comfortable on, because I think that's the one you will be the best at shot calling on and the best, the one you'll have the most awareness on. And then you start adjusting your eyesight to look at these things. Uh, and as you get better and better, and as you play more and more, uh, you will just get better at it and it will become more natural. And then eventually you'll be good enough to the point where you can like shot call and lead a group. Um, mm -hmm. I think I analyzing know. your own gameplay is also an important factor. Always record like or live stream to YouTube privately or something like that. So you can always rewatch your gameplay. I think playing without that, you're just playing blind. I don't know how you can learn from like your key if you only have the memory of that moment while there is like 30 other minutes of things happening in the key. Like how are you going to learn from individual places in the key if you're not recording? That limits yeah, a lot of people too. Yeah, I, I agree a lot. Uh, I think it's the same when I started raiding back then in Shadowlands and now starting to do high keys in M+. plus. <laughs> it's kind of similar feeling that you definitely have to be super comfortable with your kind of own role first and your own rotation in whichever you do rating or m plus and then it allows you to have way better uh like overview of the what's actually happening outside of your, yourself so definitely like a bit mike there that uh, very important to get comfortable with uh, first mm. was there any big changes that you did uh Frago going into you know pushing keys outside of uh, what you had already prepared from the rating, like any nameplate changes that were like, oh yeah. shit, I have to yeah. do that, you know? There's a, actually a UI is like super interesting because I feel like it's a bit of an arms race uh, of sorts. I mean, it's same in rating, of course, having good week or is important. But I think in M+, uh, it's evolving, I think has evolved a lot, especially in later years. Uh, and recently, I think you can do a lot of stuff with UI. Personally, I just like changed my uh, nameplates are important for me, like just seeing the spell series of mobs, uh, casts, uh, cast targets, very important. I made my focus target and focus cast bar bigger, made a sound for it actually. I don't know if it's good or not yet. Same, not yeah. Uh, yeah, I think UI is, UI is very interesting. Uh, I think you can develop it even more and do more advanced stuff with UI and like just reminders we chorus uh, for M plus as well. So like if you if you go to the same level as rating, I think that's a big uh, advantage you can have over the competition. I think usually like Echo has some custom stuff uh, and the other other teams too. But yeah, yeah. Regarding the UI, maybe because again comparing it to rating, um, but also in general the scene. Do you think it is, let's say, as developed as the race of War first, or even more developed? Because we're doing some crazy stuff, right? When it comes to this, where we have like literally coders sitting there 24-7, uh, ready to <laughs> be there for our demands and uh, code whatever you want. Uh, is is it similar in the MDI? Do you think also, are you like, how, how developed is the scene? How much more is there to discover? And how, how close are you to the skill cap of a group? Not just, you know, as a button smashing skill, but, you know, the whole thing um. i mean i would like to say that uh, i don't believe that we're ever gonna be at the skill cap uh because the nature of wow is that there's so many new things coming each patch there's new buffs new classes 
So all of a sudden you need to jump on a role you never played before, you need to play a comp you've never played before. Now all of a sudden uh, the systems that you had in place need to adapt with different uh, classes and different spells and now there's a different uh, dungeons and things like that. So the process of learning these keys, I think, and learning them quickly, that's like all of that's what all the accumulated knowledge uh, helps you with. You know what to look for. You know what worked previously. You know what didn't work previously, and that just gives you more time to fine tune each dungeon and each strategy. Um, but there's own ways something new to learn i'd say but uh and we i feel like we always get better every season and uh i think as long as you just stay competitive i think that's the main thing as well in order to improve as long as you keep doing progression rating as long as you keep competing in uh, in plus tournaments and let's say you push yourself and doing high keys uh doing farm i mean as long as you're doing all of these things I think that's the best thing you can do, like let's say, as a, uh, to improve as a player. It's just to do as much and challenge yourself as much as you can. Mm. How do you feel about the UI part? Let's say, I guess what Scribe maybe kind of uh, maybe alluded to is that like like maybe like outside help and like UI help. How do, how do you feel about that in Ambos? I guess. Yeah. So uh, we we tried two versions, right? We we had the uh, back when Fragments was on our team, we had uh, Mare sitting on the outside as a six guy. So we've tried having like the outside person, um, and uh, <clears throat> we actually do feel like that in uh, the five man content because so many things are like pre assigned. I think the main help uh, that we had was. Of course, they're getting pushed the weaker us next uh, time. Okay, we run the dungeon, the weaker will be done the next pull. You get that pushed, boom. Like things like that makes it efficient. You have Maris like sitting there and analyzing our routes and things like that, coming up with improvements, looking at cooldown timings, uh, looking at locks, comparing like different strategies that we tried, uh, looking at the um, timestamps through certain parts of the dungeon to compare the different strategies and how fast they were against each other, things like that, which is analyzing stuff that we have to do doing breaks or outside of actually gaming that was the main thing but i think in terms of shot calling it is less impactful to have a six guy on the outside uh in mdi than it is in raiding uh i think it's way more impactful to have a shot caller in a, in a 20 man raid doing progress what do you think may um i think i want to talk about the ui part or um mm -hmm because i feel like it's very important and that like some players don't put enough effort into it um i think them plates it's like the most important thing <clears throat> like being able to recognize wh wh which mob is who and instantly put on focus for example uh be being able to see the cast bar uh, maybe like with a weaker i think uh it's most uh, a lot of people um have that now it's like a we are showing every cast bar, so mm. this is way e to like make every stops way easier. Um, this is definitely something really good, um, and obviously watching the the vod of your gameplay to make everything better. Like, let's say you want to see a cast more or something like. I think UI is, is so important, and people should put more focus on that. Um, you don't think the six man like you know i feel like uh, if i was trying to win the mdi i would be trying to break the meta in a way because that's how you gain the most advantage just beating uh like just winning with just pure skill without change like just let's say i guess repeating what the uh, the vic vic winning team is already doing it, it is hard to win right that, that's how uh, back then uh, in uh, Nihilotha, limit just totally crushed us. I mean, it wasn't even close, right? I think uh, it's more efficient to have a six man, but just for practice, not during the actual match. Um... Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have to be actually during yeah. the match, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's about finding a person that you also uh, trust that can do a good job. I think it's easy said and done and is willing to do it. Um, and uh, in many cases, that person would probably willing to do it if let's say he gets like either a big chunk of money or like you split the price earnings with that guy so that's also a sacrifice that some of the teams have to maybe do 
mm. in order to get like that person and maybe well, a lot of teams that hasn't been worth it. I can say that that's what we did at least. We we did split the, it in six back when we were six people, right? Mm. Um, so <laughs> yeah, no, of course. I think uh, for for me the biggest thing would be motivation. I'm guessing. Uh, sitting there outside is not necessarily that much fun but i also heard there are people who enjoy this type of uh you know i don't know what you want to call it job gameplay it's not really gameplay but like a coach kind of yeah yeah like there are people who do enjoy that i i mean i do enjoy it in rating to a degree but uh i, I would prefer playing in general like mm. if there was you know if i was rating and playing that was always more fun to me than uh sitting outside coaching um but uh, do you have any, do you, do you think there's other ways, whether you have ideas or not, do you think, and if you have ideas, you can say you do, you can go into them if you want to, but uh, do, do you think there are ways to like unexplored areas of the meta, you know, that will get figured out in the future? Or do you think this is basically what it is? Maybe the sixth guy, maybe the weak are a developer, and that's about it. I mean, I know what system we sh we use in like uh, Race Wars first and progression and stuff like that, right? And what system we've been using the MDI. And uh, I would lie if I said that there's not certain things and ideas uh, that uh, could be taken further than they currently are. Um, but it's also uh, the amount of resources and like how much uh, you would have to do to make it work and then in the end is it is it really worth it uh like what's the gain versus the like resources and time you need to put in to actually like apply these things and stuff like that so <clears throat> i would yeah. say that and that's like the question you know like i think that there are certain things we do in the race was first that feels like they're giving very little in the mdi um and that's why we probably haven't been using them. Personally, I feel like, uh, as I said kind of before, I feel like UI, mm -hmm. both in rating and plus, it's kind of a unsolved. It's it's not like optimized yet. I think UI, you can make it a lot better. At, personally, I think, and I've, what I've seen from other players, uh, people even have worse UIs quite often, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, like you can, True. I feel like you, you can make the decision making so easy for yourself. In, in theory, you can boil it down and have like a, you could probably make it like you have like a green and red light, and you do something if it's green or red. Like if you just make advanced enough weak cores and stuff, right? So I think there's a lot of improvements that can be made on that. that uh, yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to add to that one as well, and I think that's open communication. You know, like some teams, they are usually sometimes beating around the bush. They're like, uh, they're not as direct because. They're afraid to hurt someone's feelings or whatever and i think being direct uh is is always important like sometimes you can notice that a certain player is like specifically worse at dealing with a certain mechanic or specifically uh, worse at like oh he, he usually misses his stop here or he's bad at doing this specific knock on the sanguine wave like okay so mm -hmm. why is he missing this up and that's why it's good to analyze. So then we can just go and say, okay, let's look at this guy's POV. And then people can come with input as to, okay, so this is how I have it on my UI and I have this and this, and it helps a lot. And then maybe that person can apply those parts of his UI as well. And then maybe it will get better, right? Like, so things like that, I think is also important. And I think it's really important to be able to take feedback without getting butthurt about it. I think one of the biggest things that hinders people from progressing is just having too big of an ego and i think dropping the ego and just really just having willingness to learn and improve because you might be like a really fucking good player but there are still other players out there that might be better at you at like other things and you can like learn from each other and make each other better and i think that's like really important uh, as a team yeah i think uh just to add like the, uh like getting feedback from other players as well I feel like it's like very hard to determine sometimes like on your UI if uh, like you feel maybe outside of when you're not actually playing and you're reviewing your bot or something, right? You you, you feel like, okay, uh, this is probably, this looks okay. Or you're doing some weak or beforehand, uh, this looks okay. But in actual gameplay, it's like kind of hard to 
realize what are you actually looking at, right? And what makes you realize that stuff is happening and whatever, right? So feedback is definitely good to take, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's hard, it's hard to play with players who also can't take criticism or are not open for that. I definitely have an experience with that. Uh, I can only imagine. Um, uh, before going into a competition like this, um, I mean, uh, maybe Frago can compare it to the race war first. Is there something you guys do, uh, like, I don't know, meal prep type of thing? I can imagine with Jinji or like fixing your sleep schedule weeks ahead or something. I don't know, some sort of routine that you always do. Anything? Uh, for, for me personally, of course, as we said, uh, we, we are doing this more casually now, so I'm not going to do any preparation for oh, this one, right? But what about the race to all first, for example? Yeah, race to all first, usually for me, whenever I try, like, it's not even only race to all first, but when I try to do something difficult, I try to eliminate all distractions. Maybe that's just my mind. Probably helps everyone. Just eliminate all distractions and just be able to focus on that thing. So to get real life stuff in order, you know, I don't know, clean your apartment, get, you know, figure out how you get food. Uh, just so you can only focus on your mind on this one thing, right? Uh, which is like winning the race in my case, but yeah, I don't know if it's different for MDA. Yeah, you, we had a talk as well on the flight back. I'm not going to go into details, but you had mentioned that, that you don't like distractions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jinji and Maysteen, anything? I think the distraction part is is important, right? Like you, you don't want to have like uh, other things to worry about. So taking care of the things in real life ahead of time, like just small things. Uh, so you, you don't have like any outside distractions. They could be, you know, doing the grocery shopping ahead of time, you know, like uh, making it as easy and convenient for you as possible. Maybe think about like your sleep, uh, having a good sleep pattern that fits your team's practice hours or uh, the actual hours of where you need to play the tournament so that you know that you wake up at a certain time and you get a little bit of warm-up in so you know that when you start playing the actual tournament you're like kind of peaking right you don't want to be just waking up and you don't want to be falling asleep either so you need to find that in between um and uh so like just standard stuff i guess no nothing crazy it's not like i wake up and i uh, go into like an ice cold shower or something like that you know i don't have that kind of ritual uh but the sleep schedule uh take care of things that i need to take care of ahead of time in real life and you know just things like that mm. same there for you macy or any yeah, crazy I mean, for me do? sleep is the most important uh like I, I need to fix my sleeping schedule like it's because if i don't sleep enough i will not be uh, I, I will feel weird. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but I, I won't be performing at the maximum as I should be. Um, so that and also a sh taking a shower every time and trying to avoid waking up into playing Insta because I feel like this is bad. <clears throat> so I try to always wake up early. <clears throat> You don't have to. Uh, oh, I guess you had to unmute this guy. Yeah, Gigi is having some connection problems, guys. Uh, he's he's sensing that uh, the, the podcast is ending soon as well. He's trying to quit early. Uh, but what were you saying, Maysteen? So having a good sleep schedule and also waking up before playing and not like go out mm. of the bed and jump yeah. on the computer and stuff. How many hours? Day. How many hours do you need sleep? Um, it depends if, if we are like doing practice or actual tournament, uh, mm. I think to perform. Also during the race, I mean, you guys know my, <laughs> yeah. maybe a bit hot topic, <laughs> you guys know my you know thoughts it? on sleep, but, uh, I mean, I guess we can touch on it quickly. It is quite important. And, uh, especially during, uh, these competitions that are longer where you need a lot of practice. Uh, you said six hours is good for you in general, even it's on like, competing days, maybe, I mean, or if I can get eight, it's, I will go for eight, but six is like the minimum. If, if I don't have six, mm -hmm. I will play really bad. Or about you guys, Frago, maybe from Race Roll first, and Gigi? Yeah, um, oh, yeah, I'll go first, I guess. Uh, shorter answer, maybe. 
of course, I haven't completed the dungeons. I wonder if it if it is different for with sleep. Uh, I mean, you probably need to have the same focus and stuff. If you make mistakes, you're gonna you know fail the keys. I would imagine not not that different. Um, usually during race, I end up getting uh, depends on the race a bit. Not I don't end up getting too much sleep. Um, yeah, I mean, you just kind of go through it, get some caffeine maybe, and uh, you know. What about last uh, race? How many hours did you sleep last race, for example? Yeah, last race, I feel like I got decent sleep apart from the couple of days of course uh, that, i mean <laughs> no i mean they, they like a, I, feel, I feel like a couple of days were a little bit spicy yeah but uh otherwise i think you can make do with quite little sleep but it, it will always affect you at some point of the let's, let's say next day like at some points you might be good but you're gonna have like some lows with your focus and concentration i think eventually mm. so hours wise how many do you think is enough enough uh, depends on the time frame of course i feel like sleep is like a, it's like yeah. a continuous thing let's say it's the three three week progress it's gonna catch up to you at some point but for like a week you can do maybe like four hours a day it's five oh, hours let's it's go. fine but uh <laughs> i think uh for longer stretch you need to have like more sleep at some point i feel like yeah the problem is also usually in these competitions that before the competition it's also rough right like mm -hmm. when, when the races mm -hmm. at least for me it is i don't know how much it is for players um but for me, the race starts like four, five days before that, and I'm already working 24 seven. And like theoretically, you know, really unhealthy a month even before that, where I'm, uh, you know, at least working like maybe 12, 14 hours, not maybe 18 or something. But yeah, so during the race, when then you cut even more, it is a bit uh, wild. The four yeah, hours me... is a bit spicy, I would say for like a 10 day race, but for like a Final Fantasy Savage. I mean, do you even need sleep? Am I right? <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, yeah, last thing to mention, I think it's a very good point you mentioned. I feel like before you actually need to cut the sleep, I think it's very important to be like well rested. Like if you if you go yeah. into the actual like where you actually can sleep, you don't have time to sleep, and if you are already like uh, sleep de 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 deprived, uh, it's not good. Yeah, you know, it's like a marathon. You need to manage your uh, sleep levels. But yeah, I guess Mike can go with his sleep. Still. Yeah, go on, Mike. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think uh, during progression, probably seven hours average is what I got, uh, I'd say. Some days less, some days more. Um, and uh, I'm a really good sleeper, thankfully. I can go to bed really fast, uh, even when... Because this is like how I feel after a day of progression. Even though my body might be tired, uh, my brain still... It still feels like it's it's uh, it's, it's working, right? It's like on. Um, but uh, I think removing like... Distractions, I think, is really, really uh, important. That's something I was bad at at the beginning, but uh, just uh, like removing the phone, just taking alarm and like taking it to the side instead of like sitting there looking at what the uh, liquid is doing or scroll Twitter or whatever. Like, don't do any of this. Just like go to sleep as fast as you can. I think that's important. Um, but yeah, doing MDI and stuff like that, I sleep. Till I wake up, I think uh, that's when I, you know, I ideally you sleep till you wake up by yourself. That's when you play the best. Um, so, and usually I do that around eight hours after I I go to bed. Now speaking of that, it's hard to, because everyone has like different sleep patterns. Some people are dealing with sleep problems while others aren't. So like coordinating that with a large raid roster is probably not as easy. Um, but uh, it would be interesting to kind of like have some of our players use like apps or other different programs to like monitor their sleep like how much uh, REM sleep and things like that deep sleep they're getting uh and maybe even uh on those players that have particularly bad sleeping patterns and habits to maybe like start working with them on on getting better i mean of course there is certain things like having fluctuating sleeping schedules is like a big one right uh, not getting exposed to uh, sunlight because you wake up and like close to the evening, especially during winter. All of these things uh, can, of course, have a bad impact on the players. So I think like having a morning schedule, even though a lot of gamers don't tend to have to do that, I think that is actually probably the best thing for sleep uh, for like a normal person. Yeah. Yeah. One one interesting thing is uh, I think what like going to events and stuff, right? I feel like when I went to the Switzerland event, I feel like having like to go to a hotel to sleep kind of helps with this. 
because you kind of separate the gaming and the sleeping more, right? Like when you go to the hotel, you just sleep and you come back to the you know event place and you game. But then when you're at home, it's a bit more difficult to separate, I guess, and uh, you might have more sleep problems. And... Yeah, I, ideally, I feel like like it, it sounds dumb, right? But ideally, I would like collect the phones from the players because mm -hmm. I it took me really long to learn this as well. I mean, I just dealt with it, right? I'm not going to cry about it. If I'm going to mess up my sleep, I that's my responsibility. Um, but I used to, you know, look at uh, what Liquid was doing or what uh, is going on Twitter and stuff like that. There's also business messages. Um, and the uh, last race, I did it. it. It is funny that we had as a team the least amount of sleep, but I had the most amount of sleep ever in a, in a race in the, in the last one. It's very different, and I think it's something that you have to learn and you have to actively try. And I really actively try to, you know, go to sleep. You know, you're not allowed to do anything else. I have to sleep and force myself to sleep, and it worked. Um, it, it's not. It wasn't that hard for me. I can imagine it being hard for other people. That's definitely something we need to, as Jinji said, uh, work on. If there's a sleep tracking, uh, I don't know watch a sponsor thing or something like that we are interested we're looking for things like this uh you know hook us up at partnerships at echo esports.gg <laughs> quick you know quick put that in there uh but yeah definitely uh, i think it, it is a huge topic and we will still have to have a, a couple uh, meetings about that uh, with the whole team to discuss what to do for next time because not everyone was uh, happy about it um talking about sleep and health as well um Kind of uh, one thing that also had, had helped me uh, was uh, doing like getting healthier before a competition, uh, like doing workouts and stuff like that. Because I know when I'm not healthy, you know, I'm not when I'm uh, slacking uh, my IRL buffs, and when I do that and then enter a competition, it usually was a lot worse. Um, do you guys do anything anything like that, like going working out, jogging, or something like that before a race or before a competition? Mm. Are you just don't care? Not jogging, but uh, I mean, I go to the gym. Exercising, I think, is always good. Uh, I think that's uh, you do it even during the race, right? Like you, you did it at some point, I remember. Uh, yeah, but uh, it was only like a full body workout or something, like doing like uh, the heroic week and stuff like that. Not mm. so much doing mythic. I honestly don't really have that much time unless you want to sacrifice like sleep. Um, <clears throat> but doing uh, like a a split day or something like that it was uh, not too bad i did one one workout with preach i remember i may see in frago you just you're not doing anything special <sighs> yeah i don't know like morning walks maybe a little bit maybe some blood flow stuff just very light you know exercise with maybe like some uh, resistance bands or something like that you know by stuff during or before competition <clears throat> uh even during you're gonna look like very light stuff like yeah morning morning walks some blood flow stuff but nothing nothing heavy i don't really want to exhaust mm -hmm. myself like physically i may usually see. during i feel like i don't have time to do that kind of mm -hmm. stuff so i try to do it before um mm -hmm. like i don't go to the gym because i don't like that but i try to do any exercise that i can uh Recently, I go like, to the swimming pool and swim for like one hour just to sometimes help me wake up more. Uh, I try to go in the morning. It's like a routine kind of um, just to get a little better shape. Um, yeah. yeah, not during the competition or like anything like that. Yeah, yeah I uh, it, I mean, I, I don't think uh... I mean, I personally don't have the energy to do during a competition, but I notice it helps a lot when you do it before, and then that buff carries you for a long time. Uh, if you're, you know, but if you don't do anything, if you're already feeling bad, and then you enter the competition, you run out of that uh, buff eventually, and uh, you know, it, I don't know. There, there are some horrible days, man, <laughs> that I went through, <laughs> and I and I learned from those. So, gotta definitely be somewhat healthy entering a competition. Um, my kind of last question as well is, uh, what do you think in general about, um, uh, your, your jobs and your work? Do you think like, Hey, I will do this probably for a couple more years and then I'll retire. Or do you think I can keep going for long? Do you have any plans for the future that, um, you know, you want to change something in life a bit random. This wasn't the, you know, 
it's not necessarily about the MDI, but yeah, what do you think? Yeah, pretty pretty deep question. I think to just uh, put it out there. <laughs> like this, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe per- in the near future, maybe like yeah, the next yeah. five no, years. No, yeah. no. For for me, it's actually not that difficult because uh, I don't really care that much. I'm just like, as I said, I'm just focused on doing this as well as I can, like you know, competing with Echo, and I kind of manage everything else on the side. Uh, not a very ambitious man. I don't really have any big aspirations in, li- in life, I suppose. <laughs> so I don't know. I uh, kind of live in the moment, uh, try to do the best I can and go from there. Yeah, try to be- to like do the best you can during the moment. And then you have some doors that open and then you take them. I feel like you have a lot of opp- opportunity to take in this sure. industry, like the gaming. So... I can see myself do that kind of stuff for a long time, at least. Mm-hmm. Always I a mean, way GG to do. is kind of already a streamer. I can see very easily you transition from, you know. I mean, you can still, still keep going for a long time. Don't get me wrong, Ginger. Yeah, you're not. <laughs> you're not old. No, you're yet. getting up during the year. Well, my <laughs> guess would be that you transition to like an, a full influencer, right? Maybe maybe also with your coaching. Um, go on, go on. Tell your. Tell your brand yeah, name. I, I mean, <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I have a separate company as well, right? Like, uh, so, I mean, I'm, right now I'm still loving like the gaming and the competitive part, right? Uh, so in terms of uh, job security in gaming, uh, I will keep going for as long as I can uh, and for as long as I enjoy it, which I think, well, I've been enjoying it since I was a little kid. So uh, I don't know why that would all of a sudden like uh, end now. Um, and I think, uh, well, you tell me, like, uh, job security in Echo, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll see how, how we grow and how we scale from here. Uh, not, and um, then we got, uh, I think, I mean, WoW's future looks pretty bright from all the BlizzCon uh, announcements. We got a Riot MMO coming out as well, like things like that. So, like, we got a lot of things that's kind of up our alley uh, coming up, which uh, looks good for the future. So, um I just take it a bit of time. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, maybe you already had thoughts of quitting or something like that. For example, for me, I mean, I don't know, maybe in like five years, I can imagine myself no longer doing this. You know, maybe I'm just doing the Echo CEO part and uh, I'm fully out from the gaming. I don't know, maybe I'm like too old for it. I I can see that. Maybe you guys had similar thoughts. I don't know. Uh, I can see uh, Frago maybe turning into like a Echo staff or something like that. Uh, Maystein becoming this, uh, I don't know, uh, mandatory <laughs> French, uh, you know, influencer captain, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, maybe outside coach in a mandatory team. I don't know. We don't uh, know. So. <laughs> you don't have to think about stuff uh, like, of course, like uh, Race to Wolf uh, first rating. Uh, it's a lot of preparation and commitment and uh you know maybe the rewards are not always the best or uh, you know at least financially or whatever but uh, i mean i still enjoy it uh, so i'll try to do it as long as i can i do fully agree with what mason said though doing whatever you do at a really high level it mm-hmm. eventually opens up doors i mean mm-hmm. i'm guessing none of us uh you know 10 years ago or something maybe uh, i don't know how long have you been in uh, esports struggle quite long i guess I'm, a, I'm ancient, bro. <laughs> I mean, at least for me, you know, let's say 15 years ago, as a kid, right? You wouldn't have thought that we will turn into like full esports gamers, right? And that's because you do what you love at a really high level. So I, I fully agree with that. Yeah, definitely with streaming now as well. Uh, uh, I, mm. I feel like in life in general, you can pretty much do anything as long as you just really commit to it and do it really well. You can probably make a living out of it. Eventually, at least. If you really want something, yeah, to a degree, you can, I think, do anything. Yeah. All right, uh, guys. Before we leave, I don't know production. I'm gonna uh, have. A, I'm gonna have a demand of you because I think it, it looks really weird right now. I want to. <laughs> we have a. I want something really cringe to happen. Okay. If they if they refuse, it is what it is. But can we have a Masty and Gingy stare down? <laughs> Because uh, you know <laughs> they are the they are the top uh, top two teams going into this. From you the mean last, like a graphic uh, or? No, I want I want Mason and Gingy side by side staring at each other. Yep, hold. 
All right, they're on it, guys. Let's see. <laughs> I'm turning on the stream to just look at this. This will be the cringiest thing you'll see in 2024. Put your game face on. <laughs> it's going to be real jank, but it's happening. Hold. Oh, it's happening. Jank is fine. Oh, I won. Did you out? No. He's out. <laughs> <laughs> You really put when me on the ready. spot here, Scribe. <clears throat> it's fine like this, man. Oh, wait, are they up and down? Like <laughs> Macy's gonna stir up? <laughs> you can do it if you I want. <laughs> <laughs> wait. <laughs> Too sudden. Uh, it's fine. We're at the end. We're off the off the clock, guys. Ooh, right right. Oh. Uh, is that better? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. Stare down. You have to stare at each other, yeah. No, stare, stare to the to your left, I think, Gigi, and Macy to his right. No, the right. camera, the camera is good. The camera like this. Uh, I want, I want to see, I want to see both. Holy shit, Gigi's already in the zone. Gigi, wake up. Okay, yo, what's up? <laughs> uh, Congratulations. Your most cringiest thing of the entirety of 2024 so far. Like, like this, you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly, exactly. Now be serious. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Okay, I think it's enough, guys. Maystein, he's real short. Don't worry, you got nothing to worry about. <laughs> I see Mode more say they should be paid more. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're good, guys. Uh, I don't know if you can pull it back together. Yeah, uh, try. But, uh, yeah. Cool. Um, well, that was it for today. Uh, <laughs> I had to ruin the evening at the end, but uh, um, yeah, there's two things. Of course, big thank you to Elgato Wave for sponsoring the podcast, the Elgato, uh, the, no, the Elgato <clears throat> Chamber, the Echo Chamber. Uh, and also, there will be an uh, AWC podcast coming up uh, very soon. Uh, there it is. Oh, we have the info right there. With, uh, I believe it's Raiku going to be hosting this one with Waz, Chan, and Lontar, the full team uh a true echo chamber uh but i'm sure there's a lot to discuss i'm actually very curious about the uh, awc myself um and uh yeah monday next monday at 7 p.m guys yeah you know, uh, in, in five days from now yeah i hope you enjoy that one and uh this is the end of this one thank you Jinji, frago and maystein for joining and all the viewers of course yep thank you thank, thank you, you thank you <laughs> right, goodbye chat You guys are clear. <laughs>